I spent less than $150 on a tent, on a solo tent, Robens Arrowhead One, just to see how comfortable is it. Do I get bang for the money? If you're new to this channel, my name is Matti. I live in Jokmok, north of Arctic Circle. I'm living as a dog musher and nature guide together with my partner Stina. Outdoor life is actually what we're doing for a living. Check our channel, we'll find a lot of other videos about different models of tents, hiking gear, outdoor gear and so on. We do videos that we like to do. So in this video we're going to look closer at Robins Arrowhead 1. And this is not a paid something. I bought this tent for my own money because I was really suspicious about how does it work, what do you get for the money and I think that would be good content for this video channel also. Robens is a German company who produce outdoor gear. They produce a lot of tents, different models. They also produce kind of nice, good looking canvas tent. I have no idea if they're good or bad. So when I got this tent for the first time in my hands, I was thinking it's a little bit bulky, as you see. But I compare with another tent that's called Big Agnes Coppersburg or Hilleberg Enan. They are much smaller. But these two tents, I think Enan is seven or nine times more expensive than this Arrowhead. Robin's Arrowhead comes as 1.8 kilo. It's not a super lightweight tent, but it's not super bad either. This is actually the weight of a lot of Zulu tents during 1980s. And now we're going to pop up this tent and see how it looks. When you open the bag, you get a bag with poles. And I always keep these sticks in the bag with the poles so I know where it is. It is two of these bows and they are pre-bended like this, as you see. They come like this. And then there is a longer one that also comes like that. And this one for reparation. You can easily save some grams if you swap them to some more expensive pegs. When I look at these bows, I don't either think that they are the most high quality stuff, but if one of them crack, you can easily get a new one with high quality also. One thing that I don't like is that they are different in the both sides. You should keep this one outside all the time. I like the simple things when uh, you can't make mistakes. But it's not a big thing, but you should just know it. A cheaper solution than a lot of other brands use, using. When they can save money on things like that, that's good. You have actually color code, so here you have a red blip and you have a red thing here. So, as you see, it's a tunnel tent. It's a low profile tunnel tent. And if you compare me, I'm 172 centimeter tall, so I can actually sit in it. But if you are much bigger, it will be too low for you for sitting in it. When you put it up, you put up both inner and outer tent at the same time. Not the South American tent, when you first put the inner tent and then you had to add the flyer on top of that. So this is a low profile tent. If you pitch the foot part towards the wind and you have storm, it's actually a low and small surface that actually hit the wind. If you get the wind in the side, it's a little bit more uh, like a sail. So on this part of the tent, we have one vent tile. It's very small. It is actually possible to close it. You can, there is a Velcro here and Velcro here, so you can do it from the inside and then it will be closed. Uh, this kind of stick that you have here to keep it open is actually very good. You don't find it on high-end tents. That's strange. 
you find it on little bit more budget models. But as you know, I always like a lot of ventilation, so I think it should more or less always be open. Here on the foot part of the pen, there is another vent tile. It's a very tiny piece of uh, mesh here, mosquito net. Uh, so it's not a big one. I think they could have made it a little bit bigger. But uh, this is protected from the wind, it's protected from the rain. So in that way it's really good. And another ventilation that they have is that you actually can't put this all the way down to the ground. So it will be a gap between the tent and the ground. So that's also ventilation. And you also save weight when you don't add this extra fabric all around. It's Velcron here, a zipper, and then you can open it and hang it like this. But let's open up the inner tent and put that away. And here it's also attachment for a peg or for a rope or something like that. I don't use that. And then we had to talk about the ventilation on the inner tent. This fabric here gives some ventilation, of course, and then you have some of this mesh mosquito net up here. We have some mesh here, ventilation, and it's also a panel here on the door. Uh, but otherwise, as you see, it's only this white fabric that is not super dense. There is ventilation in that, but not so much. So what I would love to have in this tent is a little bit more mosquito net here or that the whole door could be opened up with a mosquito net. So I, I would love to have more ventilation in here. Look at the construction. Now I'm sitting straight on the ground. Normally I have a, a down mat that I'm sitting on. But when I'm sitting here, I'm reaching the roof with my head. So it is a very low profile tent. Uh, you should not be too tall if you want to sit up in the tent. The space for your feet is really good. Your, your sleeping bag will not reach the roof if you get condensation on that. When I'm having my feet all the way to the uh, wall on that side, you see, then it's quite a lot of space here, as you see. And I'm 172 centimeters, so I will have it's very good with the space like that, I had to say that. Otherwise in here, there is a pocket here where you can store some things. There is some of these um, loops up here, so you can attach a rope or hanging a lamp here if you want. The vestibule is not big here. It's quite small. When I've been using this tent, I've been cooking inside here. It hasn't been a problem. You can also pull it away and then this loop is probably good because then you can add a stick here or do something like that and then you get more space for the stove but what you had to remember if you switch on the stove in the tent you must keep good ventilation you maybe had to open up a little bit down here because when you fire a stove inside there is always a risk with this carbon monoxide poisoning and that's a really serious thing but when it's raining sometimes, it's nice to make a cup of coffee still sitting in the tent. One idea with this tent that I like is that I actually can put it up like this. I can keep it open here. And if I have a tarp, I can add a tarp on top of here. So then, then I can stay like this even if it's raining in my sleeping bag, having coffee and keeping my tent open and looking out. That's the lazy old man's tent then laying down, then you don't need the high roof to sit down. When we look at the quality, I had to say, I haven't used this tent a lot. Like a lot of other products that I make review of, I, I use it a lot before I'm talking about it. This tent I've been used a little bit, but not much. So I cannot really say it's still kind of brand new, I would say. But if you look at the fabric, I think the fabric is quite okay. When I look at the stitches, when they have sewing it, it looks okay also. What I'm not super fan of is that all these seams, all this here, 
they are taped. And as you know, when you tape something, the tape will come off sooner or later. I'm not super fan of that, but it depends on how much you plan to use it and so on. The tapes here in the roof, that is not a problem. If these tapes come off, you can just put seam sealers on top of it. You find YouTube videos about how to seam seal a tent. But if the tapes come off on the floor, you can probably find new tapes that you can add or you can also seam seal and liquid sole it. So, but I think you can use this tent if you're not a professional user, you can use it several years before the tapes come off. I haven't found any information about that. I haven't found any reviews that actually show that the tapes come off. So that's only from my experience with other products that are, have tape seams. So maybe it's, it's a no problem actually. What I like that they have done with the zipper is that they actually have put a small rope here, as you see, instead of having this other thing. Because the rope is easier to open and close it, and then the thing is not breaking down either. So that I like. One other thing that are standard failure on cheap tents is how they have attached this. You see, it's only attached in the small stitches here. If this had been more high-end tent, this had looked different. It maybe had been three lines like this here. And it's the same if you look here. It's attached here. And this tent in a big storm, then this is the weak point, definitely. This tent had been standing here for more than 24 hours in really, really heavy rain. And I was a little bit late out now with the camera because I wanted to show you how the fabric react. And what we can see is actually the fabric absorb water. The outer layer of the fabric absorb water. That's why the color is more dark on that spot. Now it have dried out a little bit. And we had to look inside the tent and see how it looks inside. It is actually dry here. Yeah. Yeah. It is dry. And when we look here inside the inner tent, it is dry, really, really dry. So that is good. And I promise you, we had like 30 millimeter in 24 hours or more, I don't know, but it was heavy rain, real heavy rain. So if we look all over this tent, it's a very nice model. It's tunnel tent. You pitch both tent inner and flyer at the same time. I like that. You can pitch a tunnel tent in bad weather when you're alone and that's quite good. This is not a tent for you who are doing extreme tours, who are spending weeks after weeks up in the mountain and can't avoid bad weather. I would say that this is a perfect tent if you're doing shorter trips at home, if you're new to outdoor life, if you want to see if this is something for you, or if you have a smaller budget to buy a tent. This is a good option because this tent, Robin's Arrowhead, is a lot of bang for the money you pay. There is one thing I haven't looked into when I looked at this tent, and that's how environmental friendly is the fabric? How is the production going on? Are they using kids for making them? Or why is the price so low? But on the other hand, the other companies who say they are environmental friendly, are they really environmental friendly? It's a lot of scandals around companies like that. So it's very difficult to value that actually. All over, it's a very nice tunnel tent, easy to pitch, a lot of bang for the money. And it's a very, very good tent for people on a smaller budget, people who are not doing the extreme tours high up in the mountains. I would go for this if that was the case for me. But you should remember, this is 1.8 kilo and a lot of the other more expensive tents you save 600 gram, 800 gram when you get them. If you have any experience about this tent or other low price tents, please leave a comment. I'm interested to see what you're saying. And until that, have a nice day and see you in the next video. Ciao!